Hey guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Sabrosa Urban Tech Backpack from 3V Gear. In the past, we've taken a look at a few of their bags, such as their Redline bags and their Velux backpack, and I've always been impressed with how many features they're able to offer at the price point that they come in at. And so the Sabrosa is part of their stealth operator line, which offers more of a minimal and gray man vibe compared to some of their other bags. I've been testing it out for the past couple of weeks. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experience using the bag and how this compares to other solid bags that come in at under $100. Before jumping in, I wanna thank the company for sending the bag for me to test out. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Danny and on this channel, we love reviewing popular travel and everyday carry gear. If you like these types of videos and you'd be interested in seeing more, please consider subscribing as it helps the channel out a lot. So with all that being said, let's go ahead and jump in. Starting off with the outside of the bag, I really like the overall aesthetic. As mentioned in the intro, this is a part of the company's stealth operator line, which is meant to have a much more minimal and gray man vibe. I like that it doesn't really have any webbing or straps along the outside to make it seem like you're carrying a ton of gear. And it just has a really clean exterior that reminds me a little bit of the GORUCK GR1 Slick or something like an Evergoods backpack. So it's gonna blend in nicely whether you're taking this into an office or walking around the city. And then moving into the materials, on the exterior, the bag has a 500D nylon, which feels like it's gonna hold up well to rougher usage. It also is pretty lightweight and it seems to offer some weather resistance, although it's not gonna be as weather resistant as some of the ballistic nylon bags that we've looked at in the past. On top of that, the bag also has some really nice YKK zippers all throughout that have reverse coil zippers and then you have some nice silent zipper pulls to make it very easy to get in and out of the bag. Continuing along the outside of the bag, I was really happy to see that it has two external water bottle pockets and these offer a nice amount of space. I was easily able to hold a 20 ounce water bottle. This is very similar to the Wandered water bottle that I feature in a lot of my other videos. This one was sent to me by 3V to test out and it's been great to use. I really like that it has this wide opening to make it easy to clean the bottle out, but it has this you know quick access cap at the top to make it a little easier to drink. It has a little handle. So overall, this has been the water bottle that I started using a lot recently it's worked out very well and then the water bottle pockets have a nice depth as you can see that was a little bit of a taller bottle and it fit very comfortably there's elasticity so if you have something a little bit thicker it should be able to fit in here okay and then it's nice that that elastic kind of pulls the compartment against the bag when you're not using it to keep a cleaner overall look and then along the front there's not a ton going on i like that there's not you know a big logo anywhere or anything like that you do have this velcro area at the top that's going to allow you to customize the front with any sort of morale patches that that you want to use the company includes one of their morale patches that has their logo but you can remove that and just not have any morale patches if you want to keep a really minimal vibe and then at the top you have a very nice handle that's going to allow you to pick the bag up off the ground comfortably the handle itself is not super thick but it's comfortable enough it's pretty wide so if you have to hold the bag like this for a period of time it's going to do fine and I like how reinforced it is so it doesn't feel like it's going to tear even when the bag is a little bit more packed out. As far as the capacity, the bag comes in at about 30 liters which is a little bit bigger than what I normally like to use for an EDC bag but because the bag isn't super rigid and just due to its shape it doesn't really feel quite that big. I was able to hold all the items that I normally like to carry with me. It's nice that there was a little bit of leftover space and the bag does tend to stick out a little bit when it's packed out all the way, but I still felt comfortable using it for navigating crowded areas or jumping onto public transit. Taking a look at the straps and the back paneling, so far the bag has been pretty comfortable to wear. I like how the straps have been implemented here. They have this padding that comes really soft right out of the box. It feels very broken in, it's pretty thick. On the inside, it has this meshy material to help prevent moisture from building up. And then I really like that the straps have a nice width to help prevent the bag from digging into your shoulders, even when it's a little bit more packed out. And you also have this adjustable sternum strap on the straps to help distribute the weight. And then moving into the back paneling, you have a very nice EVA molded back panel that has padding that's actually pretty rigid. It's more rigid than what we see on the strap. So I would have liked to have seen something like this potentially a little bit more. It also doesn't have that meshy material, but a good thing about this back paneling is that it provides a lot of elevation and ventilation to give you plenty of airflow while you're walking around to help prevent moisture from building up quite as quickly. Jumping into the organizational options, the bag has a lot of great pocketing all throughout. I really love the variety of options that you have for keeping all of your stuff easy to find. 
Starting off along the front, you just have a very simple zippered quick access pocket that's actually pretty tall and large. You have the zipper along the front that has a flap that comes over to help add some protection against the elements. You can get into that really quickly. And then on the inside, it's a very simple, just large pocket that goes the depth of the front of the bag. So you have plenty of space here for bulkier items. Currently what I have is my Ray-Ban sunglasses with my case. I also tossed in this little headlamp that I've been using a lot recently. I tossed in uh, a lightning cable and power brick to charge my phone. And then the last thing that I currently have in here is just a little manicure set that I've been carrying with me recently. So as you can see, no sort of internal organization in this pocket, just a nice big area for you to toss in items that you wanna grab a little bit more quickly. Next up, you have a larger kind of admin area that has a lot of internal organization. And I like that this pocket is actually fully clamshell opening so you can easily see everything that's on the inside. Starting off on the back, you have a variety of slip pockets that are gonna make it easy to just keep your stuff organized during the day. Before jumping into those, at the bottom you have this kind of, just a pocket here, a little pouch that you can toss in uh, a dot kit or a pair of gloves. It's you know just gonna be a nice area to keep that easy to grab. In this area, I just tossed in my Matador pocket blanket. And then behind that, you have a larger slip pocket that's gonna be a good spot for something like a notebook. Or in this case, I actually tossed in my Wire Dot Mini from Go Rock, which just kind of fits in there perfectly. And then on the back of the compartment, you have a series of smaller slip pockets. I like that these offer a nice amount of elasticity, so they're gonna work well with bulkier items and mold around what you place inside of them. So in this one on the left, I have my Blue Pop portable Bluetooth speaker and power bank, which is a larger and bulkier item. And then you have a few slots to hold something like a pen or a flashlight, which is what I have in here at the moment. And then moving along next to that, we have a few slip pockets that are kind of on top of each other. On the front, you have this one that has kind of a mesh so you can see what's on the inside of the compartment. I just have my Apple Magic Mouse. And then behind that, you know, it's nice that you could actually use both of these fairly well, given how elastic they are. I just tossed in in the back, this little tin from Pete's Pirate Life that has some band-aids and some ointment. And then the last thing here on the back is you have this lanyard that has a plastic clip, which is gonna be a good spot to attach something like your keys or a multi-tool. And then on the flap of the bag, you have two additional mesh zippered pockets. And it's nice that they have mesh so you can see what's on the inside of these compartments. They also offer a nice amount of volume and space. And so I have this uh, bottom one empty. I don't really have anything in there at the moment, but at the top, I actually tossed in this little kit from Side by Side, which has some masks and uh, hand sanitizer that I like to have with me. The next area that we're gonna take a look at is the external laptop pocket. And so this is on the back behind the straps. You actually have to move these out of the way to be able to access the laptop pocket. So it's not the quick access, but it's nice that that kind of helps keep this zippered area a little bit more protected. And it has a zipper that goes down a nice amount to make it very easy to access the compartment whenever you need to reach your device. It has plenty of space for at least a 15 or 16 inch laptop. Currently what I have here is a 13 inch MacBook Pro. You can see that it fits in here very comfortably. And so pulling this out, now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. No sort of fleece lining to help prevent against scratching. Uh, the compartment does offer a nice amount of padding. It's not suspended off the bottom of the ground. The bottom does have some padding, but it would have been nice to have this area be pulled up just a little bit to you know, give you some extra peace of mind when placing your bag down a little bit rougher. And then one of the cool things about this compartment is that it can work both as a hydration bladder area if you wanna store something while you're hiking to get some water. You can see that there's some pass-throughs and little Velcro loop to allow you to kind of attach everything. But there's also this bit of Velcro on the back, which is gonna be meant to pair with a lot of the accessories that 3V and other companies sell that turn this into a good concealed carry weapon uh, bag. So you can attach you know, some sort of holster here and just be able to carry um, your CCW with you whenever you want to, and then you can take it off if you don't wanna use it. So I prefer to use this as a laptop area as I don't have a CCW, and I also like having my laptop in an external compartment as opposed to having it in the main area. So it does a good job overall of making me feel like my device is gonna be well protected, and I like the versatility of being able to use this for other purposes in addition to just carrying my device. The last area that we're gonna be taking a look at is the main compartment. And so this is a top loading main compartment. I would have liked to have maybe seen this be clamshell style, similar to that front admin compartment. It's a little strange that the main compartment is is a top loader, but 
I've seen that sometimes with bags that have these larger and more capable water bottle pockets. So that is a little bit of a trade off. It's, it still works well. It opens up wide enough to make it easy to pack and see everything that's on the inside. Again, at 30 liters of space, there's just a ton of capacity for anything that you might want to carry with you. This has most of my EDC items and you can see it's not very packed out at the top. I still have plenty of room to toss in uh, an extra change of clothes or a lunchbox. Diving into what I currently have here, first at the top, I have my DGI Mavic Mini with its hard case. And then moving down a little bit further to the bottom, I have my Beats Studio wireless headphones with a hard case as well. I have my handy little thing pouch from Tom Ben, which has a lot of my dongles and other small tech accessories. I tossed in a small notebook at the bottom, a full-size moleskin notebook. And then the last thing that I have here is my Levitate portable standing desk, which fits in there very comfortably. Now with the compartment empty, you can get a better look at the inside. So a pretty simple layout overall. I like how much this bag comes up. This is gonna make it great for using it for minimal travel. I'm gonna be able to easily toss in my double-sided packing cube, a dot kit, maybe an extra pair of shoes, and easily use this for a longer weekend trip or even for a week of travel if I was packing very minimally. Uh, so just a really nice capacity there and versatility offered by the simple layout. And then on the back of the compartment, you have a few additional kind of features. So at the top, this um, Velcro loop that's meant to pair with a water bladder, you can be used in either the external compartment or the internal, depending on how you organize your stuff. I'm assuming you don't want the water next to your device, so you can kind of pick and choose where all that will go. And then you also have an additional padded sleeve in this pocket. This is what they call their internal laptop sleeve, and so it's pretty thick. It does offer some padding and elasticity. You're definitely gonna be able to fit a 15 inch laptop in here pretty comfortably or a larger tablet if you wanna separate your devices. One thing that's interesting about this sleeve is that it's actually open at the bottom. So it's not suspended or anything like that. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, the bottom of the bag itself offers some padding, but it would have been nice to have that be a, a sleeve that was pulled up a little bit off the bottom of the ground. It would have just given it some additional protection, but it's nice that you can use that to separate items in this main area or just kind of lay it back flat if you don't want to store anything in it. And then on the inside, you have much like the other uh, organizational compartment, you have two mesh zippered areas that can be a little tricky to get to, especially this one on the bottom. There's a zippered pocket here that is mesh, uh, but because this isn't a clamshell style bag, it's can be a little difficult to reach it, especially when the bag is packed out. So I don't use that one quite as much. I also have this top one that, that offers kind of a quick access pocket if everything else is full since it's near the top, it's gonna to prevent smaller items from falling down towards the bottom of the bag. Again, I don't have much in these pockets just because there are so many other places to organize my items in addition to the pouches that I use. But in general, I just really love the layout and space offered in this main area and throughout the rest of the bag. There's tons of different ways to organize everything. I love the minimal aesthetic. And if you're looking for a comfortable bag, it's gonna give you a lot of flexibility and also come in at under $100. And this is gonna be a fantastic option to check out. And so to wrap up, it's been a pretty good experience testing out the Sabrosa Urban Tech backpack over the past couple of weeks. And you can currently purchase this on 3B's site for about $70, which I think is a really reasonable price considering the features and build quality that this has to offer. And it also compares well to other similar bags in this price range. And so as I was testing this out, the first bag this made me think of is the 511 Rush 12, which we looked at really recently. That's another really solid everyday carry bag that's gonna have much more of a tactical vibe. It has a lot of molly webbing along the outside. It also offers tons of pockets, a really comfortable harness system. That one's gonna come in at a little bit of a higher price point, but it also has a slightly more rugged build. So if you're looking for something that's gonna offer tons of ways to configure the bag and offer you know, some of the concealed carry weapon capabilities that this has, and that's gonna be a fantastic option to take a look at. Another bag this made me think of is the Osprey Apogee, which we also took a look at pretty recently. And that was a really solid kind of all-purpose bag. It came in at 28 liters, so close in size to this. It works well as a daily bag, or if you have a little bit of a heavier load, it can handle that as well. It has a really sleek and minimal exterior. That one's not gonna offer quite as many organizational options as this, and it doesn't have the ability to work with a concealed carry weapon, but it has a great harness system, a solid build quality. It's also gonna be a little bit more expensive, but if you're looking for a comfortable and simple everyday bag that's also gonna work great for hiking, then that's gonna be a fantastic option to keep in mind. Another bag this made me think of is the Mystery Ranch Prize Fighter Pack, which is one of my favorite minimal everyday carry bags. It has a very comfortable harness system, a little bit more comfortable than this. 
in my opinion. It also has a really sleek and minimal vibe. That one's not gonna have all the organizational options that this has. It has a pretty simple pocketing layout. It's also gonna be smaller and slimmer. So if you have more of a minimal everyday carry, you don't really need to have that much stuff, but you want a bag that's just gonna you know, blend in very well into any environment and offer a comfortable harness system. And you also have a little bit of a higher budget, then that's gonna be another fantastic option to check out. And then the last option that I'll mention here is the Evergood CPL24, which is another really just versatile bag that can work for pretty much any purpose. It has a great build quality, a clamshell style opening. I like that that one, even though it has a minimal vibe, it offers a nice amount of pocketing and organization. It has the suspended laptop sleeve, I really love the internal layout and how all the pockets offer their own independent volume. The harness system on that is gonna be really comfortable. I actually think the one on this is a little bit more comfortable just due to kind of my preferences and how I like my straps, but it's hold up very well. It works great in the outdoors. And that one is gonna come in at a much higher price point at over $200, but you get a lot of value for that price. Again, it just has a great organizational layout. It can hold a ton of stuff. I love the clamshell style bag. It works well for minimal travel. So if you're looking for something kind of like this that's gonna maybe be with you for a little bit of a longer time to come, and that's gonna be one of the best options that you can take a look at. With that being said, the Sabrosa Urban Tech backpack holds up really well against all those bags. And if you're looking for a comfortable and spacious everyday bag that's gonna offer a ton of organizational options and come in at under $100, and this is gonna be one of the best options that you can take a look at. And I'm curious to hear what you guys think of the Sabrosa backpack and how it compares to some of the other great daily bags that we featured on the channel. And if there are any similar options that you think I should check out, as always, please let me know in the comments. And I wanna thank the company again for sending the bag for me to test out and to you guys for watching and supporting the channel. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one.